What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I wanted to make this video first and foremost I like doing these uh, kind of weekly updates like I'm still gonna do my giant monthly update, but like uh, just in terms of um, Kind of studying what I'm doing and stuff now. I did uh, I did decide to do a 40 hour week again this week the 40 hour seven day language challenge of course, I modified it um, because I do work a full-time job, and my goal, just like last week, was to get 20 uh, hours of active slash like study and immersion, and then 20 hours at least of passive. Obviously, the more uh, the more towards active, the better. Um, but I wanted to have at least 40 hours of Japanese blaring into my ears again this entire week. So, uh, what I did this week, I had 11 hours and 50 minutes of study that is your Anki your Bunpo that kind of thing and then I had 11 hours and 57 minutes of immersion which I will get into that as well um, so that totals 23 hours and 47 minutes of active study which is great that's almost four hours past what I was shooting for and my total was 42 hours and 37 minutes so I hit the 40 hours again now it's not as much as it was last week um, but this week, uh, especially like I had a podcast and I had some stuff going on. Like I knew that last, this past week would be a tougher week. Um, and so I think I made it work really, really well. So that brings my total to, uh, in the last two weeks, I have studied for 24 hours and 24 minutes. I have immersed for 25 hours and 59 minutes, which gives me a total of 50 hours and 23 minutes of active Japanese study. And I have 87 hours and 50 minutes of just Japanese in general. That's total, that's with active immersion and passive listening. So uh, I'm gonna jump into a few things. I, I do have a couple of notes here just because I wanted to make some stuff up, uh, you know, say some stuff for you guys, because uh, I wanted to write down statistics and stuff like that. So um, first I'm gonna go into the study portion and then I'll go into the immersion portion. Um, for study, same thing, RTK, uh, the Tango and Five Deck, just the same general stuff. Bunpo, I've got two modules left to finish the GLPT and five grammar, but I've kind of relaxed on that a little bit. But with RTK, um, I have 182 cards left. Um, my mature percentage, I am answering at 88.34%. So I'm pretty good with that. Um, I know that overall they want you to hit a little bit higher than that, or, or as long as it's above 85. Um, there's some that I definitely struggle with, but... Um, which I will get into this into the immersion, but I've noticed that there are characters that I actually recognize in the wild that I struggle with recognizing in RTK, and I think a lot of it's just the context of seeing it, but I'll get into that in a minute. And then the Tongo deck, I have 573 cards left. I'm over 50% done. I have 49% of the cards left, so I'm 51% through the deck. A mature ratio, I'm answering at 100%. Um, but I'm noticing that that deck is a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, and I don't mean that it's easy, but I mean um, because I'm quizzing myself on the reading of Japanese and the audio. Um, like if I don't understand it, even if I read it and then I hear the words and I kind of know it, but I don't know the sentence, I'll fail it. But even if I understand the words, like for example, if I um, if I knew the sentence, uh, even just like say, kore wa nan desu ka? What, is, what is this? Like if I knew the sentence, but I couldn't read it, I would still fail it. So I'm testing myself on both. Um, and so far it's going really, really well. So it's it's not as bad as I thought it would be. So uh, that's pretty much it for study. Um, the closed master thing, I did a closed master stream, but I think that's gonna be replaced with something else when I do the live studies. Um, I'll probably just go to like a reading practice because I found something I really enjoy. And um, that's pretty much it. I don't really use anything else. Now, as far as immersion goes, first and foremost, um, reading is something I've wanted to get into and I finally found something that has helped me with that and I'll get into that in a second. Immersion though, I'm gonna go with just TV shows and stuff first. Um, uh, the immersion that I'm listening, or that I've watched, Psyche K, which I've still watched only about nine episodes of that um, and I still find it to be fun. They still speak really, really fast, which I mentioned in the last episode, but again, I know that that just kind of unlocks with the more immersion you do. So um, I'm enjoying that. Uh, I did finish Kantaro with the Sweet Tooth Salaryman for a second time. Um, I'm not gonna watch it again just yet um, because I feel like there's so much more out there that I need to get and just wording that I need to get in my head and just hearing different contexts of words. Although there was a really cool instance this past uh, week where, was it this past week? Man, my weeks are running together now. I think it was this past week. I was watching it and um, the word uh, for like, like director or sales manager type of situation, it's Bucho, uh, came up 
And so that's a word that I learned in Tongo specifically. There's actually been several words in Tongo specifically that I have learned that I have heard in um, Kantaro or whatever. But I was like, okay, so like, like you know, the Tongo deck is cool. I love the Tongo deck, but I was like, when would you use this? But in this show in Kantaro, they call their boss Bucho. And I was like, okay, so that, like, I don't have to think about it anymore. I know that now. Like, it's it's like it was one of those things that just stuck because of immersion. I learned it through a flashcard, and immersion made it stick. And so, like, little bits and pieces like that are slowly unlocking. And, like, it's it's a really weird thing, man. Like, I've, I've switched my mentality from maybe I can do this to this is happening. It's going to take a little bit, but slowly by slowly, piece by piece, it's unlocking. So... Uh, but anyway, that's Kantaro, so I finished that. I'll probably go through it maybe in about three months, maybe at the six-month mark, right? I'm about to finish month four, maybe in another two months, just to kind of see where I'm at. Because in another two months, I should be at least nearing the end of Tango N5. I don't know. I'll have to double-check and see kind of where I'm at. But uh, I think I can make that work. So, And then I did start another anime. Um, as you guys know, not a huge anime fan, but I'm slowly finding some things that I enjoy. And um, basically, I just Googled Slice of Life, like, slice of life Anime. And uh, the thing that I found was a show called uh, The Devil is a Part-Timer, and I have so far really enjoyed that. Um, I don't really 100% understand what's going on because I am watching it purely in Japanese. Um, but other than that, like, it's still, it's a pretty fun show. It's at least visually appealing, and it's making me watch it, and that's kind of the point. So, um, now, in terms of reading, I found two things this past week. One I found, and then one um, I had tweeted about it and somebody was like oh this is cool but you should also try this uh, i found an app called manabi m-a-n-a-b-i reader for the iphone and i really dig it and i think it's really really fun um i think that it's only for iphone though um or you know ios or whatever but uh there's another one called satori reader satori reader and it's really really good as well and there are definitely pluses and minuses of both of them mainly cost satori reader is more expensive but it does a lot more stuff. Um, and I'm going to do like kind of a, like as I get a little bit more into them, I'll probably do like kind of like a comprehensive review of both of them. But just in short, Manabe Reader is, is the th one thing I do like about Manabe Reader versus Satori Reader is that in Manabe Reader, you um, you can sort the articles kind of, by, or there's at least like a difficulty. And then like in Satori, like they're all there and you can, so once you go into a specific tab, you can then sub sort by difficulty. But I like the idea of being able to sort by difficulty straight from the get. Um, the flashcard system in Satori Reader is amazing. Uh, Manabe Reader, you have to have a separate app for that. Satori Reader, it's all together. And the thing I like about it is if you see a word um, and then you see it in a new context or a new sentence later on down the road in another article, in the same article, just used differently, you can actually add that context to the card, even if it's conjugated differently or anything like that, it recognizes that it's the same word, just used differently, and you can actually add it to a pre-existing card as a new context. And then when you review those cards, it actually shows the cards and the context of those cards. Um, so those are both really cool. But I've actually done, uh, yesterday I read for about an hour, and that's the first time in a long time. Now on Satori Reader, you can actually go in and change it to where the kanji will, it, you can set your grade level, that way it will not show the furigana for kanji that you know, like up to a certain grade level. Um, right now I have furigana on because even though I know a lot of kanji in terms of RTK, I don't know how to read them, so I still have the furigana on, but it's helping me actually pick some stuff up. Um, I haven't read a lot. I've read like like an article on a cat taking a train from like I think Tokyo to Akihabara or something like that, and I actually learned randomly a new word, which was like uh, to, uh, tobinoru or something of that nature, which is like to jump up on. Like the, they were using like the cat jumped on the seat, um, which I can't remember seat right off. I think it's like um, uh, se uh, ka kaze ka I don't I don't know right off, but uh, the other word stuck. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's all going really well, and it's just slowly unlocking these patterns um, in my brain, and it is a really, really cool experience that I'm just really, really enjoying. So um, that is about it. 40 hours, another 40 hours in another week. If I can do this, man, for, God, if I could do this for a few months, my Japanese would be so much better than what it currently is. Like, it's amazing at what this challenge has done. Again, if you want to do this challenge, just use this hashtag. It's uh, hashtag um, 40H7DLC, 40 Hour 7 Day Language Challenge. 
Um, myself and Mark uh, from Language Come Up generally check the hashtags and stuff because we'd love to see. And always feel free to comment, leave down below whatever. Uh, I want to check any of your stuff out because I enjoy that. So, um, But that is pretty much it. Am I going to do a third week? That is the question. It has been exhausting. Um, I've been staying up a little bit later, and I know sleep is important, but I've, I've been staying up later sometimes to get, make sure I get the study done. And um, basically, I just really feel like I want to do this again, man. I'm progressing in Japanese so much. Like, it's not that it's faster. It's just I'm, I'm more efficient. Like, I'm spending more time. The more time I spend, obviously, it's going to do that. So, plus Skater XL is coming out next week, and I know that next week will probably be a down week. Uh, because I've been looking forward to just a skateboarding game for so long. But I am going to do another, I'm going to do a third straight week. And if I can close out three weeks at over 120 hours of Japanese, that is going to be absolutely incredible because I wasn't even hitting like 100 hours a month. And three hours, 120 hours, I think that's going to be absolutely incredible. So, um, yeah, that is it. So hopefully I answered anything that you guys may have uh, questions for or anything like that. Stick around. Month four update is coming, even though you're kind of getting updates now. But I can give you just an overall general thing of what's going on. And, uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Follow me on social media at Seabolt Speaks. Make sure you tweet me anything that you're doing. I want to know. I love hearing about what my community is doing, what the language community is doing, not my community. But, like, let me know. I want to know. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you all in the next video.